The binder class in Vadin has three methods that can be a little bit confusing when you are starting with the framework. So these are setBin, readBin, and uh, writeBin. So let's see with an example what these methods are all about. Okay, so I have an application running here, which is a kind of a, a form to, or not a form, but a view to manage products. And all the products are going to be listed here with a button to edit the product and the button to uh, delete it. And we can also create new buttons. Now, this is not working, so the form is not working. And that's our mission here, is to complete that form, which is this class over here. But let's, let me show you first what the product class is all about. So we have something very simple, name and available. And we have a couple of validations there with uh, ja Jakarta bin validation. It's not Java bin validation anymore, but Jakarta bin validation, getters and setters, and that's it. So that's the domain model. And we have a view, it's what you saw, and we are showing somewhere. I'm not gonna go through all this code, uh, but the way this is a part of uh, uh, an example, one of the examples in my upcoming book on Vadin. So um, so I'm using the code that I, that I um, explain in the book in more detail. Uh, but the important part here is that when you click that new button, for example, uh, is this one here, it's gonna go and show a product form and send, in this case, a new instance of product. So if we go to that method, just creates a dialogue, creates a new product form, which is this class over here. And it, this allows you to specify as a, a serializable, runnable kind of to react to the, to the button click in the form. So what that's gonna do is just um, close, close the dialogue and save the product, whatever it is. Uh, that that means and this application is just adding it into a set of products but uh, like i said this is uh, not that important and it's similar for the um, um, edit button which is this so it shows the product but this time it's showing some instance that comes from uh, from the, the collection or it could be from a database anyway so uh, that's not the important part the important part is that we have to implement this class all right and uh, it's pretty empty right now so let's start first by saving this in a field because we're going to need that listener. And um, what else do we need? We probably need a layout and all that, right? So let's um, override init content because I'm using a uh, composite here. So uh, let's return a new vertical layout with, uh, for example, in H2 as a header product and we need the fields but we don't have them so let's create them right after this private text field so it was I think name and I'm gonna call this text field for now just to highlight something later and kind of to make it more explicit that this is uh, an input component an input field if you wish and we also need a uh, um, a checkbox for the available property. So checkbox available checkbox. Let's do the same here. And it's gonna be uh, these are gonna be added here. So name text field and available checkbox. Okay. Um, this is the form, so we also need a button right there to save the data with an event listener. And when we cl click the button, what we want to do is call that, that listener there. So save listener, run. Okay. Um, cool. So at least I think we should be able to see something on the screen because we have uh, the fields and we are adding them there. So so let's uh, let's check that out. Okay, so new product. So yeah, so that happens when I click edit. It's the same class, so it shows the same. But look, uh, I'm trying to edit this product. It's not showing the name of the product here. Also, mm, I'm pretty sure this is available and it's this it is not checked. So that's not working. And if I add a new, 
product like um, wine click save it saves null here and possibly not um, setting the, the boolean value either now this should work because it doesn't require any data binding which is what we want to explore here okay so let's do the data binding real quick so private binder uh, but we want to use um, Jakarta bin validation so instead of just binder we want to use bin validation binder of product and I create a new instance right here now we also want to send the um, the class there because we are going to do the automatic validation um, sorry uh, binding uh, by calling bind instance uh, fields all right so this what it does is uh, it kind of creates the connections right between these which is of uh, an object of this class which in turn has these two fields and by fields that technically means that these are it should implement has value and, and these do implement has value if we if we go and inspect the source code i promise you will find it somewhere it extends something and this also extends something so at some point i'm pretty sure look uh, has value and element we're getting close um has value there we go so um it does implement that and the same happens with the uh, checkbox and um, all the other input components so that's what's um, going to happen there is that the binder class is going to go through all the uh, property here is, this is a property but it's not a has value right so it's not going to take that one but this is going to take them that's trying to match by name so if we go to the uh, product class we have name and available so they should be exactly the same so for example here it should be name for this to work unless we use which i recommend use the property id annotation and say this is for name right this comes from the the product and the same for the other one so now this is going to work and we have kind of uh, the internal connections for the binder so the binder knows how to bind now a product with this form okay but which product this one here but we are not even using this instance so the binder has no idea it's actually the, the idea is actually telling us that um, it's not being used so now we're going to play with the methods that, that I mentioned that uh, can be a little bit confusing so uh, binder we have three things so we have um, set bin and it receives a product we have also binder dot uh, read bin with a product as well and binder dot write bin and it receives a product and um, this is showing uh, an error because this throws it could throw an exception right uh, so we have these three methods when to use them what's the difference between them all right so i'm gonna leave this uh, for later let's study these two guys here read bin and write bin so the name might not be very clear but once you understand the, the concepts it's actually easy to to remember all right uh, because we are reading and writing data in both these cases so read bin means read this bin but of course you, do, you just don't want to read the bin and read bin means going through the properties using the getters and getting those values from there but read the bin and set because I'm a binder so I have to do some data binding so uh, read the bin read the properties and put them in the fields according to whatever the bindings you you uh, configured we configured them automatically you could do it manually as well um, uh, manually real quick binder it means for example um, uh, binding a uh, what was it name text field to a set of um, uh, a getter and a setter right product uh, set name like that that's manual but we don't have to do that because we will have to do it for this one because we did 
this and we used property ID and if you don't want to use property ID for some reason you have to call this only available and here only name all right and that and then you can delete this but I do recommend to use um, the annotation it's gonna be uh, easier to maintain in the future anyway back to readbin so readbin reads the property here, here in this instance in this object so it's name and available and write them there and write bin now you can guess it's the opposite right so write bin means uh, take the values in the input fields and write them into the product so the, the way I kind of um, think about it is I just go and, and, and try to to make it uh, or, or, or to tell it this way to say it this way read the bin means read the properties and write them into the fields write bins mean means write the values in the that are in the input fields to this bin right um, and that's what's going to happen when you call these methods so now that we know that now we can control we can or uh, we can tell the, the the view when to do those things so let's think let's think carefully when we have to call this we're in the constructor and we're given a product which could be a new product so it has like a, na a new name and uh, there is no data in it or it could be a product that came from a database so we need to show whatever it is in this uh, product we need to show that data in these fields so that the user can edit that product so what 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 is that we have to do this one or that one well this right because we need to read from the product and set to the input fields so it looks like we can remove this line and probably if I compile these and try the application again when I click edit it should call the it should uh, show the the data of these uh, product beer in this case so let's see if it works uh, let's try again so beer is there and it is available so it works um, now if I go and change everything it's not reflected here it's not changing it's still the same because we are not writing the bin right we are not setting that where do we have to do that when we click the button save and before we save the listener because that listener needs the data in that bin that it passed there so it seems we need a field for the product correct so it's now over here so we can use it right there so now we write when we click the button when the user clicks the button we write the values into the bin the ones that come from the input fields all right this throws an exception so we need to add a try catch and probably uh, show a notification here notification dot show please fix the errors and then we call this over here otherwise we don't we don't call it if this fails it jumps to design um, so with this this should save the data let's try it out so let's try to modify that that product I probably um, I made a mistake uh, let me see what's going on Okay, at least the, the application is, is running, but I have a breakpoint somewhere. That was because I have several. Several classes with the same name, I guess. Okay, let's try again. Okay, now it's working. So, um, I had a, a breakpoint that was a problem I put put it there accidentally anyway um, we were at saving right so 
click this we are reading the the bin setting the values there now we modify this to wherever we want with with key for example it's not available for some reason save and now it actually changed the data so this part is working the right bin um, and you saw also maybe the um, validations happening there right so we cannot we cannot save the product if we don't specify a name for it very good so that's read bin and write bin how about the other one so we had another one that was set bin what's the difference with that so set bin what does first it does exactly the same as uh, read bin so what I just changed it's gonna do the same when you execute this line it's the like the effect is the same right it's gonna uh, read the values from the product instance or the bin and put them into the uh, values in the uh, input fields that's what it's gonna do but also it's gonna save internally an instance of this product that we can get later so for that reason we don't need this so we can remove this line because we can get the product from there so we can delete that too right and the other thing that it does because it has the instance when there is a change here kind of a, a value change um, event then it's gonna write that in this bin because it knows which one to use right it's keeping an instance there internally and so we need to change this uh, we don't need to write the bin because uh, like I said it's gonna do it automatically so let me just uh, maybe remove all the things that we have here except the call to the listener and so what we can do here is um, actually let me show you that this works just uh, just like that so it's gonna write the the um, the data that comes from the fields into the product all right so let's try that so let's change now to wine available save so it works right now if i don't specify anything and click save it's gone because we are not running that logic so we need to fix that but it's saving so remember it's saving if there are no errors it saves the data if there are errors and i click save it runs the logic to to close the dialog but it and, and show the notification but it doesn't write the data into the bin because there were errors so how can we fix that well we need to ask the binder if it is valid and if it's valid we actually um, um, sorry close the file we actually run the listener but if it's not then we show a notification again errors okay so let's try that now so I think this should work so save no I cannot save it and chose that notification let's get back to beer available save and it's working um, so that's the difference right so remember read bin takes the values in the product in the bin and write them into the fields write bin does the opposite takes them from the fields to the bin and set bin does the writing part automatically if there are no uh, errors validation errors and does the same when you call set bin does at that point it does it does the same as uh, read bin 
All right, so uh, let me know if you have any questions about this topic or if you have suggestions on what to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.